Amen and amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Oh, just this morning, just going to encourage us, you know, to just stay the course. Ah, there's indeed, there's indeed a fight. Oh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. There's such, there's such an onslaught. Well, before I begin, let me just even say thank you. And God bless you to Pastor Emisi and, and to the leadership of IRA. God is doing something in us that is beyond what we have ever known. And God is such a God of process. So I want to thank them for this opportunity. And to also ask that the Lord will strengthen Pastor Emisi again and again. It takes, it takes a visionary to invest in a people. It takes a visionary to look at someone and see something else. Just the same way Jesus looked at the 12 disciples and he picked them only by the help of the Holy Spirit. He picked people who didn't look like it. But what did he do? He walked with them three years. And by the end of that time, they became another. They became who he has seen them in the eye of God to be. And what were they able to do? They were able to carry on even his message, the desires of the Father to the ends of the earth against all odds. So I tell you, we are in such a time again. History repeats itself. There is a pushback everywhere. And it's intense, no doubt. Everyone knows that we're in the, in the last days and there will be much, much, much more onslaughts, much more pushback, much more things to cause people to, 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 to be weary, to think about where, where, where do they lie in the midst of all this? Like, God, why have you created me for suffering? Well, we don't know that. He is the one who gave us life in the first place. So what are you talking about? The life he gave you is not for you. He gave it to you so that you can fulfill a purpose for him. But as he's helping us to understand what that purpose is, we are receiving the onslaught from the powers that control this earth, this earthly realm. Yet he has chosen us by his, by his son, Jesus Christ, and by the help of the Holy Spirit to be a people chosen to show what is marvelous light. And that will not be a ride in the park. So this morning, I just came to encourage us that you know that faith you have received from the Lord Jesus Christ is such a precious faith. It's such a precious faith. And that faith is for generations. It's not for you. No matter how you think it's so small, or you think it's so insignificant that, okay, just the fact that I pray daily, or just the fact that I have the, the, the acknowledgement of the presence of God in my life, in my family, that God can use that. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And yes, he is. Just the way he did with Noah in that generation where he was. where people have now become so anti-God. God found a recognition of a man who seemed to have a, li a, little, a little seed of faith in his heart that is a God who does not love this way of life, who does not subscribe to the, to the extremities extreme life or extreme tendencies of man and he's willing enough to call that man out and bequeath to him a faith that can save generations that is a god who sees 
goodness in anything that he has made. Who sees beyond what that thing even thinks he sees himself to be. So today, I'm encouraging us that that faith, that belief, that conviction is your own seed, is your own light that you have received from the Lord. And you know what? It's not for you alone. God bequeathed it to you for the saving of each generation. And we pass it on and on. I, in particular, have been fascinated by the story that was highlighted by Paul in 1 Timothy, where he was commending the faith that Timothy received from his grandmother and his mother. And now he is experiencing it and he is letting it to blossom. And see, he's telling him to bequeath that even to the church of Ephesus. So it means that what you think it is small, that your trust in God, that your ability to pray for people, that your ability to reach out to people in help, that your, your ability to encourage people is not a small thing. You did not receive it on your own account. God gave it to you because he wants to save a generation or generations yet, even yet unborn. And let's not be, let's not even get it twisted that the enemy will not come for us or that he will not fight because he always does. He is, the, he is the principality. He's the spirit of this world that is trying to blind the eyes of people from seeing that there's a God who loves them enough to want them for himself because they are his anyways. He just, he just has in control over them because we are in this L realm. We are in this head suit. This body, this flesh that pans towards good and evil. But we don't know that there's a God and there's a spirit that is pure and true and only desires to worship God, only desires to honor God, only desires to do the things that God wants him or her to do at any point in time. So we are in this world where we are in an intense struggle every day. The struggle is real. It's real, but that great faith is even more real. That little faith is even more potent, even more powerful. It's even more powerful. And we're not going to give in to the, to the lie of the enemy. That what is it that I have? What have I got? We got what God has given us, which is our faith. Which is our faith. Which is our faith. And this faith can withstand anything and everything, anything and everything, as long as we stay rooted, 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 as long as we stay, as as we stay uncompromising about what we have received. That's our inheritance. Absolutely. I have no doubt that that's our inheritance from God. That's our inheritance. And that's the inheritance that we want to pass to the generations to come. And how is God doing that? He's opening our hearts. First, he opened our heart. It's just the same way he opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings of, from God. You see? God is very mindful of us. But he knows that how do we receive this faith? How do we become a purveyor of his great pleasure? Is by us being a, having a heart that is open. And that's what the enemy is targeting. He doesn't want people's heart to be open. He wants them to be blinded so that they, they are, their hearts are not open and they don't see the knowledge of the truth of God's word. So they don't receive Jesus. So they, they continue to perpetuate their evil life and their evil ways. And they think that, oh, but I have free will. But that's it. God gave us that free will. He gave humanity free will. But that free will he gave us, he didn't give us so that we can self-destruct. He gave us so that we can, by ourselves, choose the only living one. But what has the enemy done? He has twatted that same purpose God created and used man against himself. That's what we're seeing all over the world. 
use man against himself, man against the earth, man against one another. We see replete of murders, man against um, a government. We see corruption and embezzlement, not causing a people to develop and a people to flourish and thrive. We receive man against himself, man against the earth. Seeing uh, 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 diverse kinds of, of, of disasters, natural disasters that have now become like a daily occurrence because the order of man is against himself. But that faith that God gave Noah, that's what even set him out of the crowd. It wasn't because Noah was better than those that are around there. It was just that they were just in an age where they were anti-God. They were expanding in all the extreme in knowledge of science and, and new things. It had happened ages before, as it is happening now. Now we are seeing artificial intelligence. We are seeing robotics. We are seeing all these things. Man is expanding in knowledge and bound. And he thinks that all this is for the 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 how will I call it, for him to expand himself, for him to become another God. What is it that he cannot do? What is it that he cannot do? What is it that he cannot do? He is by himself now thinking he's sufficient. <laughs> One day I said that, I God was trying to interpret that song to me. Uh, immortal. Invisible God, only wise, enlightened, accessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious. Thy great name we praise. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a rendition of how we interpreted that song for me. And, and I was blown. He said, immortal, invisible God, only wise. He said, there's nothing on earth that truly captures who he is, yet he's the creator of all things. In light, inaccessible heat from our eyes. This means that in his presence, that he wanted to take him all in and experience him as God. He would have my sense of reasoning and understanding blown. That's what he wants to do with man. To have our sense of reasoning and understanding blown out of proportion and comprehension. That our mind could, could, could not and would not be able to unpack how great he is. Because there's so much to him that we have yet known or come in contact with. He's most blessed, most glorious. Meaning he's all in all the requisition and holder of knowledge, yet assessed and even not yet assessed. The ones we have assessed and the ones we have not yet assessed. Nothing matches you, oh God, in abundance and increase. Everything pales before your grand display of awesomeness and beautiful splendor. And you are still about to display your great strength right when it looked most unlikely. We are in that time. That way it looks most unlikely. God is yet, God has not played his last joker. Now he's revealing that last joker through us, through the faith he's given to us. Because you're looking at that faith and you want to despise it. But that, we are not going to despise our faith. He's pushing the boundaries of our finite reality with your infinite expressions. We don't yet know this God enough. He's the God of all possibilities. He's the ancient of days. You have played out more days. Ah, this one wowed me. God is the one who has played out more days than any one man had the ability to live through. You have lived before, during, and after every day you made. So this day you are living in, God has already lived through this day. Man, all you made and fulfill your play, your purpose, even within time allotted. God who does not live within time anyway. Every season, every dispensation, every civilization, display the magnanimity of your power to allow for man to evolve and express your glory or his, or his own. Because man now feels like he can express his own glory because he did it all by himself. Throughout all days, the earth remained. You have more higher. This one blew me up. 
He said he has more data on man to trump artificial intelligence. So whatever it is anybody saying right now, saying there is artificial intelligence, we, in which realm are we sourcing that data from? Is it not from the realm of man that we know? He is only the God who has data on man that we have not yet known. And machine learning put together is almighty victorious. You are all that is above all, triumphing over all. Thy great name we praise. Your proven strength, your power, your wisdom, your blessing, your riches, your glory, your honor. We totally praise and will continually be in awe of. So the faith that we have received is about to cause our world to be to be revolutionized. And how did he do that? Because we are in this age where people is coming against the God by reason of the things that we are people wanting to become what they are not, wanting to become homosexuals and all that. God is saying that, that that faith you think you're carrying within you, your ability to trust in God, your ability to wait on God is going to deliver a generation that, are, that is here and has not yet come. But it will be from one person to another person to another person. So don't look down on what you carry. But Noah stepped out in reverent obedience to God. He was able to partner with God. So God is counting on us to partner with him in that your family over your children, in your workplace, in your businesses, in everywhere he has put you. He's partnering with you so that you can step out daily in reverence, obedience to him to build God an act of faith. Because first, it was instruction that Noah received before he was able to build what God wanted him to build that was eventually going to save his family and then save the history and the progenition of man. And that faith, God used that same faith to condemn a world that was doomed to not give him the praise. And that is the same faith that God is going to use to condemn this material world. And at the end of the day, God then even gave him the gift of righteousness. Because I won't believe me away. At the end of the day, we receive that gift of righteousness through our Lord Jesus Christ. The devil will always want to lie to us every day that, who do you think you are? I am who I am because of Jesus. And I'm not going to believe the lie of the enemy that I don't, I don't have what it takes to do what the Lord wants me to do because I recognize that my life is not my own. The faith that I have is not my own. He gave it to me and I can believe him to use it for the honor and praise of his name. And this gift of righteousness comes by believing. So we are believing unto believing unto believing and, and a life and a generation, families, businesses, everyone, institutions, governments are being saved. Their lives are being preserved. And the, and the, and the, the kingdom of Jesus, yes, the kingdom of God and of his Christ is being expanded over the earth. So brothers and sisters, hold on to your faith. Hold on to the confession of your faith. Hold on to that which you have received of our Lord Jesus Christ. Never ever look on it like it's small. So this morning we're going to pray. The Lord, help me see what you have put inside me. Holy Spirit, so that I can build with you as against what is out there. Our children have been saturated with a lot of things on social media. But we're not going to give up. We're not going to give up. Even it's coming into mainstream education. It's coming into every realm. Their mind is being, is, is like the enemy is on a roll to make sure that they do not live the life that God has apportioned for them. But we, we push back. We push back by reason of this precious faith that we have received. We, we take no for an answer. Can we pray? Can we just lift up our voice and pray? Say, Lord, help me see what you're put inside me. Help me see that which you have given me. Help me see the help of the Holy Spirit that you have that you have impacted in me. Help me see the faith that keeps believing you in the face of all adversity. Help me recognize what you're put inside me and help me use it against the onslaught of the enemy. Let me not fall. Let me not bow to the pressure. Let me not, let me not think that you've not given me anything. You've given me a heart that seeks after you. Lord, help me. 
in the day when it will come, I'll be tired and I'll be weary. But Lord, you will help me. You will help me. You will help me. You will help me. You will help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us to see this precious faith that you have delivered to us. Help us not to give into the pressure of the world. Help us not to give into the pressure that the enemy is pounding upon us, upon our families, upon our children. Help us, oh God, to push back. We bring, we lay everything at your feet. That as we pray, as we call on you, we lift up our children, our marriages, our families, our workplaces, everything you've laid on our hands, our businesses, our projects, ideas, purposes, Lord. We lay them before you and we say, Lord, these ones belong to you and none other in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I do not cast off the confidence that I have in you because my faith is in you. Help me to grow it day by day. Help me to surrender to you like a child does to a father. Help me to walk hand in hand with you day by day in holy and obedient reverence, building what you want me to build, not Babel, but you better where you, oh God, reside, that indeed the nations of the earth will turn and say, why is your own like this? It's because I believe in a God that is greater than anything anyone has seen, greater than artificial intelligence and machine learning put together. That that faith remains strong and sure. That, Lord, help me to see that this faith is precious. If he has preserved, Lord, even the pre-tracks of faith, he will preserve me because you have made me yours. I choose to be yours. I choose only to be yours. I choose to carry your name. I will not bow to the pressure. I will not bow. Just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego refuse to bow. We will not bow. We will not bow. We will not bow. We will rather, we know that our God will save us. And if he chooses not to save us, we will not bow to your God. We will not bow to Babylon and his extensions and expressions. In the name of Jesus, our children will not be overtaken by the culture and the pressure of this world. They will not live their lives according to the order of the prince of the air. They live their lives according to the order of the wonderful counselor, everlasting father, and the prince of peace. And of his government is who we bow to. His government that knows no end and no bounds. Father, we trust your zeal to help us in these times. That no matter the pressure that packs on us, we stand even in our lowly place in the midst of trials, tribulations, and, 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 and things that are not favorable to us. And we say, we only call on your name, the name of the Lord our God. And we will bow to no other God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that no matter how terrible the situation in our lives is, it is apparent that this faith you have given us is an, is an active expression of you, O oh God, in our lives and is available to us even in the most unlikely and odd times to build anything that is yours. Lord, I lay all my resources, my life, my money, my time, my relationship, my breath, I, I, I put it on your altar and I choose to build with you with them, knowing that you will take it and you will change lives and you will cause people to believe in you, that there is a God who is greater than everything that we have ever seen. That the struggle of faith, this tension that we feel between God's word and what the world is seeing in pop culture, that we will not override our faith. We will not override this precious faith that we have received, but we will stay true, believing trusting in him who has called us because he has given us a faith. He has given us an inheritance. Yes. He's given us something more precious. Yes, more precious. More precious. The inheritance among those that are sanctified. We receive it. We are strengthened in these times. Oh Lord, by your word, we are strengthened and we are not buckled in the knee. We are not buckled in the knee. Ah, yeah. Oh, Father, we thank you. And we give you praise. We bless you, God. We bless you, oh God. And we thank you, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. And so, therefore, I declare over you and everyone who is on this call, everyone connected to us here, just like Paul prayed for the church of Exodus. Ephesus, and so now entrust you into God's and the message of his grace. 
which is all that you need. That's all we need to become strong. That's what we need to become in this time. As we need it, we need it to become strong so that all of God's blessings, all of God's inheritance are impacted through the message of his grace, which he provides as a spiritual inheritance to all of his holy ones. That is our inheritance in Christ Jesus. So today, Lord, we receive the word of your grace that is able to build us up and give us an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. We receive this inheritance and we live it out in our very real lives each day in the name of Jesus. We are not discouraged and we're not put aside by what the enemy brings against us but we receive your word and the word of your grace that renews us daily causes us to come before you and causes our faith to be renewed in you that we will stay trusting in you no matter what comes our way and that in this work of faith we will receive we have begun to re we receive that inheritance already and we will even distribute that inheritance to our generation and generation yet unborn that they too have received a God a message, an assurance that keeps us going even in the, in the face of adversity. Father, we thank you. We bless you, God, because you are a good God and you are faithful and you are kind and you are awesome. And we stay true to you. And we say, Lord, help us, help our faith, help us to be strong, help us to lean on your word. Even in the day where we don't know where to go to or how to trust you, Lord, we just come in your presence and we're there and we're saying, help us, help us to carry through whatever the challenge that you're able to help us, you're able to lift us, you're able to send us help from Zion, just according to your word, that the help that we need in this season that we are in, you will deliver it unto us and that we will recognize your, honey, your word, your happenings, your dealings in our lives. And Lord, we will not despise it. We will not cast off restraint, but we'll stay believing in you who has called us and that you will give us an inheritance among those that are sanctified. Our inheritance that we are is that we are joint heads with Christ. We will be standing shoulder to shoulder with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is our greatest inheritance. We will not lose it for anything in this world. It will be our joy to be standing with you, Jesus, in that day of, 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 of the Lord's coming. Lord, let us not cast off restraint, but stand believing in you that our heart will rejoice in seeing your coming and standing shoulder to shoulder to you with you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Because we will, we will be translated from this life into the life that is coming. Because we stood believing in you, that you are the true God that saves every soul. We bless you and we give you praise. Thank you, O oh Lord, for help and strength that you have brought us this morning through your word. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for many souls that you will yet save in this season and in the days to come. Thank you for the wonderful miracles that you will do in nations, in lives, in companies, in, in institutions that will revolutionize this world for you, Jesus. And we cry, let the spirit and the bride say, come. We say, Lord Jesus, come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, oh Lord. We bless you and we give you praise forever. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining. God bless you. Over to you, Sister Nick. Thank you very much, Mutuke. Thank you so very much for us this morning. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. We pray that he will continue to increase you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the charge and the reminder. Uh, and we pray that the Lord will enable us, you know, as we go day by day to just stir our hearts and just keep our mind on the fact that the faith that he has placed inside of us is for a purpose and it goes beyond us. So God bless you, men, sisters. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, please let's remember that the next prayer watch is at 9 o'clock, 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And then we gather at 9 p.m. for the last watch this weekend um, for our Bible study. And um, the, today's Bible reading is Nehemiah chapter 5. And um, the next prayer watch will be at 12 midnight, Monday morning. God bless you all. Have a good day.